Over time, organizational IT systems evolve. That means that the Power Query solution we previously built may no longer be using the correct connectors. For example, we might have built a solution with an Excel workbook and now that data is stored in a SharePoint list. Or possibly we previously used a CSV file and now we need to use a SQL database. Well, the good news is that we don't need to build our entire query from scratch. Instead, we just need to make some changes to the M code at the start of the query. Yes, making changes to the M code, that might sound daunting, but don't worry, in this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to do it so that you can make sure that when you change that connector, everything still works correctly. So let's fire up Excel and let's go. The example that we're working through in this video is that we previously had data in an Excel workbook and now we have that data in a SharePoint list. Now our query, this is the output of our query. If we look at the source step, you can see it uses file.contents and excel.workbook. These are the connectors to get to a local Excel workbook. So we can't use these connectors. Not only that, our next step, navigation, that will drill into a specific sheet. The step after that, promoted headers, that will then promote the header in our Excel workbook. None of these are required if we're using a SharePoint list. So we need to make changes to these first few steps in our query. That's the plan, let's see how we do it. The first thing we're going to do is the most important step of all, and that is to create a backup of our query. So I'll right click on my query and then go to duplicate. Then I'm going to rename my query and let's call it backup. So now if everything else goes wrong, we can always copy the code out of our backup query and place it back into our original data query. The next step is to find the switch point. This is the earliest point at which we could build the same query using our new connector. So let's click through the steps of our original query. So source, we can't build that from a SharePoint list or navigation, promoted headers, possibly change type. Yes, that is the point at which we could build a SharePoint list that has exactly the same number of columns, exactly the same column names, and also the same data types. So this is now our switch point. We need to take a note of exactly how our data is laid out at this point. If you're there thinking you wish you could be better at Power Query, then why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. There you'll find everything about our training program. It contains a full Power Query course. We also have our Power Query Quick Steps library, which is a library of custom functions to make advanced transformations really, really easy. Not only that, you get to join our Q&A sessions and also join our live masterclasses. So that's the place to go if you want to be better at Excel and Power Query. We're now ready to create a query for our new connector. So I'll right click, go to new query, and then because I'm dealing with a SharePoint list, I'm going to use a SharePoint online list, but you should use whatever connector you need to use. That now brings up our dialog box. I'm going to paste in the SharePoint URL. Let's go for implementation two, and then we will retrieve all the columns. And I'll click OK. Right, that's now connected to our SharePoint site. And the data that we want to use is SharePoint list data. There is SharePoint list data, and I'll click OK. So here's the data that we have on SharePoint. We have lots of additional columns that we don't need. We just need our name, region, and units. So I'm going to select those, right click, and then remove other columns. Now our column headings in the original data at our switch point were item, region, and value. In our SharePoint list data, they are name, region, and units. So let's name this item. And then value. Now let's also check our data types. So in our original data at our switch point, it was text, text, and then whole number. So let's apply that. So item should be text region should be text and value should be a whole number. 
Now let's change our new connection query into a fully working query. So I'll go back to my original query. We'll take a note that our switch point was called changed type. We'll then go to view and advanced editor. In here, we see the code for the entire query. And we want to select everything after changed type. So the switch point was changed type and we want everything after that. I'll press Control C to copy that code. Then I'll click Done to close the advanced editor. Next, let's come to our new query. We'll go to the advanced editor again. And this time we want to paste the copied code over the in and then the last line of code. So that last step name, I'll paste that. Now there's a few changes we need to make. So here's our switch point. So grouped rows, that's where our new code came in. The first thing we need to do is to go to the line of code above and enter a comma. Now in this scenario, you'll notice that our previous step was called change type, but also in our new query that we use a step called change type as well. This is just because of the example that we've used. You might have different step names here. And if you do, you need to make sure that the previous step name, which here is change type, is identical to the step name that's used in that pasted code. So that means those two step names have to be identical. Then we can click done. Okay, that now updates our query and you'll notice that we get exactly the same output from our SharePoint query as we do from our original query. So that means everything is working as it should. The final step is to deploy our query. So we'll go to our new query with the new connector, go to the advanced editor, and then in there, I'm going to copy all of that code. So Control C and then done to close the advanced editor. I come back to our original query, go to the advanced editor, then I'm going to delete all of the code in there. So Control A to select all, press delete, and then I'll paste in the code that we had from our new connector. I'll click done. Now we already know that this code should work because we've tested it out on our new query. Everything's still working. That means any queries that were connected to our original query will keep working. Everything else should continue working in the right way. The only thing that's left for us to do is now to clean up. We no longer need that new connector query. I can right click and delete that. We no longer need our backup query. So let's also delete that query. Changing to a new connector can seem scary because we have to change the original M code. But hopefully you can see that by working through these steps and finding out where that switch point is, that we can easily switch out the code between those queries. Now in reality, you're likely to have a much more complex scenario. However, all the principles, all the methods that we use still hold true. It's all about finding that switch point so that you can then reuse the code in the way that we showed in this video. So if you like this video, why not subscribe? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.